In a Nail the Mix first, Chris shows you how he used his tape machine on the If You Can't Hang mix. Chris explains his entire process of using tape as well as the characteristics that make the tape desirable when mixing. Enjoy. That's the vibe of that part. So now we can get on the tape. Um, let's go to a loud part again. We'll go to a loud, chunky section. Maybe that intro again. Um, and I have the tape machine. I'll show it in a second on video, but I have it on IO. What do I have it on? Three and four here going through. And I have it set up just to give you a forewarning, even when it's in input mode, um, just going through it boosts quite a bit of gain. I have it set up for a different project um, where I'm slamming things really hard. So I'm going to add a trim plug in after this just to bring the overall volume of it back down so when we hit the rest of the master bus stuff like when we go back to the compressor again um, it's not hitting the compressor any harder and I'll have to adjust this as I get the tape going but uh, I have the tape machine first in line. So I'm, I'm at my master bus and then I'm going to go tape and then into the C1. So I'm essentially inserting the tape before the C1. Um, so let me go over here where you can see the tape machine. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. All right. So on the tape machine, there is what's called the input control right there, the input setting, and then the repro setting right there. So when I'm on input, it's going through the tape machine's electronics, like the preamp in the tape machine, um, which is boosting the volume, but it's not going through the actual tape until I click repro. And because there's multiple heads, on this tape machine, um, the repro has a little bit of delay because I'm not going to record to the tape and then stop and then rewind and play it back. I'm actually going to simultaneously record and then monitor from a separate head on the tape machine called the repro head that allows me to hear what was recorded seconds before. So we're essentially using the tape like a plugin or an outboard processor. So I'm going out and then right back in. Um, so you'll hear when the delay clicks in, you're gonna hear a little jump or skip in the song. Um, and that's the delay between the record head and the repro head. Uh, but when it's in input mode, there won't be any delay. Um, also, if you're unfamiliar with this machine, but you do have UAD, uh, it's an Ampex ATR 102. And um, all the settings on this are essentially the same as the settings you would see on that plugin. It sounds extremely different, but it looks very similar. So if you're kind of wondering what I'm talking about and you have that plugin or you want to like Google it, it's an Ampex ATR 102. Um, this is a half inch, half inch tape is um, SM 900 from a newer company called Recording the masters. Sorry, tape. The, the companies that have been making tape in the last 10 years have changed hands so many times. I can't ever remember what they're called now, but uh, it's essentially like RMGI 900. Um, I bet there's even an SM 900 setting on the plugin, but that's the brand of tape and it's a half inch width. And I mixed this song at 15 inches per second originally. Um, so I have it set up for 15 inches per second, which is 15 ips, 15 IPS. Um, so first of all, let's just get my gain kind of eyeballed to be the same here. I'm on input mode, so we're not going through the tape. We're just going through the um, electronics. Figuring out the gain. Ooh, did I nail it? No, probably not. So this is without correcting the gain. So this is this is how we've been listening to it. Peeking around, negative three. So this is the tape machine in without any gain correction. So about two, two three dB otter. So let's 
and I'm eyeballing this. I'm not being scientific about it because we're going to push the tape machine harder before anyways, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So um, this is going to be kind of like we're going to be toying with the input gain of the machine and output gain back to the compressor a little bit anyways. So there's no reason for me to be scientific in the beginning because it's just going to change and it's all done by ear for me just of how much compression I want to get out of the tape. So this is turning the tape machine back down a little bit. And this is without the tape machine. That's close enough for me. So I'm going to go back to the tape machine view. I'm going to come over here and it's going to start on input mode. I can't, I don't think I can reach my mic and switch back and forth, but I'm going to start it on input mode and then switch to repro, which will be you hearing the tape. Um, so as I switch back and forth, you'll, it'll basically be input, then repro, then input, then repro. So let's start on input and you'll hear me switch them. gonna leave it recording for a second that's the one thing about tape is you can't mix the whole time with the tape going because you'd burn through so much tape and tape is so expensive now um, but let me loop this section hopefully you heard the difference so this is this is repro this is the tape playing even though you see the tape playing when i switch to input you're not hearing the tape but this is the tape Put a trim before it to hit the tape a little bit harder. The thickness and glue I'm getting is rad. This is without any tape. Um, this is just how we were before. And then this is the tape machine gain stage the way I like it. No tape. Slam in the tape. Boring no tape. Rockin' tape. So I hope you guys can hear the difference that I'm hearing yes. on that. Um, there's a lot more low end. Let me uh, let me stop this expensive. It just sounds better. Yeah, there's more. The low end is like glued together. There's more depth. Like you hear what I was intending in the mix and it just like pops out. And now for some records, the tape is just too much. Like there's too much of that gluing together and smearing things so it sounds cool. Um, but uh, on a mix like this that is very simple and sparse, it really adds a lot of energy to it. And the um, thing I was just going to add real quick before the tape... And this is uh, very common to EQ before tape because um, tape does change the EQ. I am just going to 
do a little corrective e whoops corrective eq here and pull out some of that like over the top low end and then i can put low end back in later um like i like the i like the low mids and like the 100 hertz area on the tape a lot but i'm getting a little too much maybe 60 or something and part of that is that i have these custom flux, well, they're not custom, but they're like aftermarket flux magnetic heads. They're really popular in the late 90s when records started to get thinner with digital recording. When digital recording sounded thin in the 90s, people started putting flux magnetics heads uh, on their tape machines because they had an extra low end boost that made the digital, the like mid 90s um, digital tape machine recordings uh, sound really big. Digital sounds a lot bigger now. So my my head what's called head bump is a little intense in the in the sub frequencies because this machine is this machine's from the 70s and then it was turned from a four track quarter inch into a half inch two track in the uh late 90s at some point. So it's a very 90s setup machine. Oop. Let me get the tape rolling again. <laughs> 